say last but not least, let me give you an intense 15 <laughs> minutes. So I leave you with a bang, right? Um, so uh, when uh, uh, Professor Al Hassani and I uh, we talked, um, uh, we uh, got in touch because Professor Al Hassani wanted someone to help him uh, revise his uh, geography section and map section of the Thousand and One uh, Nights. And I have been very impressed, actually, with Professor Hassani because he's very open to criticism and uh, to changing and, evol and uh, improving the text. And so we got into quite a discussion. And then I told him, I said that um, I was actually using A Thousand and One Nights. I uh, teach Islamic technology, and now I've been teaching Islamic civilization. And I think it's important. It's a one way to engage the students. So I didn't have, you know, the Hassan and Hill text has been out of print for a long time. So I've been using A Thousand and One Nights. And we said, well, let's uh, discuss my use of it. Inventions. Uh, a Thousand and One Inventions. Here, I even grabbed the book from down there. Um, and uh, let's uh, do it such that we ask my students to give some kind of feedback, which they very generously did. And I'm giving you the uh, comments and everything. They even put their email. If you like them, you get in touch with them. They're very sweet. Then I looked at your program and I said, oh, this is uh, not nice. Everybody's presenting on their work. And normally I go talk about maps. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try and smooch it a little bit, right? So my book is running around here somewhere. Uh, there are flyers for my book. I usually do talks on maps, but the talk is actually going to be on my use of, of teaching Islamic technology in the classroom. So I'm cheating a little bit. So I just want to give you a quick, uh, quick brief uh, overview about the kinds of things I do. Uh, some of them talked about in this, ma in this uh, book, uh, which is available uh, for purchase, uh, shameless uh, book advertising that we all need to do at some point in our lives. Um, so uh, I have, in the course of my work, uh, thanks to the patronage of uh, Ekmaladin Bey and uh, David King's support and influence from Professor Saliba and uh, Professor Bullitt, of course, has influenced me to watch technology, collected hundreds and thousands of maps. I swim in maps. This is one of my biggest problems in life, actually. Um, and I'm constantly trying uh, to make them available. And so I thought I would just show you just a little bit. I've developed what I believe to be the most sophisticated uh, manuscript database uh, for Islamic manuscripts that I have completely done myself. This is just a couple of sample pages. It's 15 pages. The idea being that you should be able to search cross-platform uh, for anything, you know, whether it's a pigment or a title or whatever. Here's another example. This is the page with the maps. And it's designed such that it works on your computer and on your um, iPad. And then, can we switch for two seconds to this thing? You see, I do very complicated things. OK, so while I was at AUB, don't mind my empty terms here. Happens. It was the one version after this that had. I was very fortunate. I was at AUB. Um, I didn't actually know that Kennedy was there, you know, so sad because they weren't uh, 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 promoting him at that time. And uh, Peter Heath was there, poor man, he passed away, but uh, he uh, supported the initial uh, um, sample of my project. Uh, I have not been able to get beyond this because of being a pauper and living on no money as a very poor professor in Idaho. But I wanted to share what I do have. Um, what we did develop, uh, very funny, funky stuff. Uh, for those of you, can you just put the top light off just briefly? Thank you. Uh, for uh, Part of this is also to show, because I know that um, the uh, Islamic uh, sci uh, historians of science are very critical about the these maps. They're not scientific enough. <coughs> so I did some things that will be very interesting. So one of the things I did was I took all the places and plotted them on a Mediterranean map. This is just a Mediterranean map. There are 21 maps in these manuscripts, by the way. So my book uh, that's going on is on the world maps. I've got a book coming out on the Mediterranean maps. I'm also working on Islamo-Christian uh, influences um, and how you know they uh, get some ideas from uh, Muslim maps, etc. But uh, one, this is one of the things we did, you know, and it's very interesting to see. So the map is squished together, but if you start to look at the layout of the places, you realize 
that where the emphasis was, you know, in Al-Andalus, uh, on the westernmost end of the Mediterranean, and the easternmost end of the Mediterranean, you know. Uh, and then um, also uh, back, so this map is interactive. Of course, Flash is the dying breed now, so this is one of the problems. But the idea that you can click someone who wants to investigate these, who doesn't maybe know Arabic, can click and get this kind of thing. And then uh, I did uh, show the areas, you know, get information. So, for instance, uh, you can click on one of these. Only the red balls are functioning still. And you get information both in, you know, three uh, English, transliteration, and Arabic. And then you can get more information. Algarve actually is a very interesting place on these maps. So. I use these maps uh, to look at ways of thinking, ways of perception, and all of those funky things. And then there was uh, we did a gallery uh, to show a range of images, uh, comparison. Some of this stuff is going to be hard to do, but uh, I will tell you, I'm shamelessly uh, trying to uh, tell you what amazing this material is. If anybody wants to support my project, I would be very happy. Um, because I really have thousands of maps that have never been s come out of libraries, and they trusted me because I was this Pakistani woman, and they liked me very much. They let me photograph. Most of these are my own photographs, by the way. That's how I collected some of this stuff. So this kind of comparison uh, is some of the things that I do. And now I'm going back. You see, I told you, intense. We're going back to the other one, and I will do what I promised Salim I would do which is talk about 1001 nights. Okay, so in addition to maps or because of maps, I also do uh, technology. And uh, I was thinking about, you know, after yesterday and all the discussion that happened at the House of Lords and looking at some of the tension, uh, hearing some of the tension between the, is the Islamic uh, scholars of science and uh, the uh, more general, you know, uh, sell to the public um, uh, approach of let's reach the public with this work, right? And uh, one of the things I came up with was, you know, why tech? Why is tech? And I'm, I'm trying to explain where uh, Professor Hassani is coming from. It's a very interesting angle he has because, you see, he is an engineer. So he's thinking there is the science. I'm coming from sort of the artistic perception, uh, because I look a lot at interpretation and ways of seeing and this kind of thing. If you put art and science together with the people, you get tech, you get technology. And technology is the daily application, which brings science from the heavens, where you guys reside, right? You do. And uh, the arts artists who are out on the fringes, right, to the mainstream. So this is where I think your project is so useful, right? As in reaching large numbers of people, reaching students, right? Um, and making this material, making them aware of this material, right? But then they become, there are issues on how accurate are we being? Are we uh, being too um, bombastic about some of it? This is some of the kinds of issues that come on. So. 1001 inventions uh, exist in the realm of creating wonder and intriguing students, right? This is the catch, this is how it hooks people, and it's a good thing, right? Because we're getting students who would normally not be interested in this material interested. So, right? Now, when I first started doing this, uh, teaching technology, I was in Lebanon. And it was wonderful, right? Because in Lebanon, we have on site uh, Saida's soap museum. I could take them there. Uh, we have, you know, uh, woodwork, uh, building, uh, binding, all of these things, right? Glassworks. This is the last glass blowing in Lebanon. Amazing. Um, but when you get to America, what do you do? How do you teach? This is the challenge, right? How do you teach technology to American students? And we've had some talk, and uh, uh, Glenn has talked about teaching science and, uh, you know, astrolabes, etc. But those classes are much smaller. When you go to Islamic civilization, you've got bigger classes. You have students without the science background. You cannot do this kind of sophisticated math with them. You would lose them instantly. 
but we want to hook them. So technology becomes a good hook. Now, when I was in Pennsylvania, it was very nice because I could at least go to the freer and show them uh, the glass works, etc. Or take them to the local mosque, a very nice mosque in DC, right? Uh, take them I within to show them the tile work and the rugs and everything that forms the technology. But, and of course, you know, why not some good food? Because food is a process too, it's a technology, right? Uh, the creation of food, right? The technology. Teaching them the technology is not the end product, but the process, that's a very interesting thing. Uh, so it was all good, but then I go out to the West and we have nothing there. We don't even have a decent mosque there. Forget about a museum. So there, the challenge of doing Islamic technology, which was something that was interactive, that was on the ground, is very difficult. Now, I don't know if you've seen this incredible series called Architecture of Mud. There's a wonderful film on it, and that really hooks my students. But still, it is seeing and not doing. So what did we come up with? This was my husband's idea. He said, buy Tinker Toys. So I have this huge collection now of Tinker Toys. And what do they do? They create the stuff. So here they are making uh, trebuchets, and, um, and they love it. Talking about astrolabes, this is my layperson's end of it. The non-math, non-science, down to street level, uh, which is where Al Hassani is. Uh, getting them to make this, you know, they have so much fun. Right, this is the uh, one is making a shaduf here, another's got a nauria, you know, and they get the water and they actually do it. They have a ball. Here's another one, these are, and let's not say it's only the boys, the girls are really into it. And I don't get the complaints you got that it's too simple because you would think Tinker Toys are from their childhood, but I don't get that complaint. So they really enjoy it. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the trebuchet. We use, we make them and we get the ping pong balls to fire it and then they actually have a, um, a kind of a game with, you know, they see who can fire the ping pong ball further. Now this is really interesting, huh? A girl with, and I was looking at your little Medina, sophisticated, but this girl, she did this herself, right? So she has the art background, she has the interest, and what did she say to me? Professor, will you let me do as my final project, let me create a mosque? a miniature mosque, and she made Suleimani a replica, replica. Isn't that incredible? Down to the tiles and everything. David King's like, I don't know about this. This is not real science. First mosque in <laughs> <Idaho>. <laughs> yes, please, we need a decent mosque in Idaho. Honestly, it's really difficult. They have them in little houses, like personal houses, you know, it's, a, it's not a real mosque. Now, uh, why, why 1001 inventions? See, I'll go on the road and help you sell your book also. But we'll fix it also. At the same time, we'll adjust it, right? Uh, so we used to have Hassan and Hill. I'm sorry, the, the slide wouldn't let me compress it, but you know this book, the illustrated. Now, I used to use this, but it was so difficult because it was published by UNESCO. It went out of print. I would constantly have to call UNESCO, get in touch with them. Please, can I use for this class uh, the scanned copies, you know? It was difficult. And we know, of course, that Donald Hill has his Islamic Science and Engineering, but if anybody has used this book, you know that it's not for the lay people. Mm -hmm. There's too much sophisticated material. You cannot take, teach it to just average uh, undergraduates, right? So this is where 1000 and Inventions came in very useful, because suddenly there was something, okay, so not as sophisticated as Hill, but that's also a problem. Uh, not quite as well laid out as the Hassan and Hill is literally, because this is uh, more about the undergrad, about the high school level, and this is something that Professor Hassani and I have been talking about. I'm trying to persuade him to create a second edition, which would be an edition for college students, because this is one of the issues: is that it's in some ways almost too simple for college students. Now, that said. Uh, Professor Saliba will confirm this, I'm sure. Um, some of our American students are not the brightest in the brightest bunnies in the woods. But now maybe this is everywhere. We always have. Oh, you won't confirm. Okay, don't confirm anything. But we know that we have, uh, of course, you teach at Columbia, try teaching Boise State, you know, where ex they're not the best, right? So we really have to dumb material down to reach them. This helps. 
And of course, you know, when you have an exhibition to go with it, which I only got to in DC with my students, they loved it, but they also said it was a bit on the simple side, but they still loved it. So this uh, disjuncture between simple, but yet active, right? So somehow, how do you meet, marry that, right? Bring it up to a higher level, but still give them the activity. Because the activity really helps them understand the material, right? Uh, and then I found Professor Saliba looking at the ele elephant clock. I thought I should oh. absolutely include this. Now we know everything. And look, Ekmaladin Bey, you are not exempt. I found you on the internet too. And you know, why is it important? Uh oh. This is a spoof that was done by Canadian Broadcasting. This is a spoof that's done by Canadian Broadcasting uh, Services. But it's a spoof based on what's going on in America today which is that, you know, Trump is trying to deport all the Muslims. Well, uh, shouldn't he also be deporting Kafi, algebra, and surgery, right, because of their Islamic origin? So more than ever, we have the need to reach, to reach out, to find a different way of presenting the contributions of Islam to the world, not just to Western civilization, but to the whole world. And I think this is imperative now, and this is why I believe in this, and I think this is the solution, and maybe there's ways in which to bring it to a high level. Now, permit me, and of course there's always maps. Permit me one last uh, thing, please. Uh, as I told you, I will do it fast. Um, so I ran a quick um, experiment with my students. Uh, yes, here we go. And uh, I will show you some of the charts. And uh, so I gave them a quick survey. Now, it's only 25, and in order to really get uh, good results, you would have to do it again, but we just talked, and this was the first time, the first class, so, and I have a stu class of 38 students, but, you know, 10 of them didn't show up the day I gave the survey. So how many of them like the book? Look at this, 64% love the book. So you've got popularity in terms of the book, right? <laughs> Accurate? Now, they don't know all the details we know, so they think it's pretty accurate, right? They don't know that there's some issues, some questions. They like that. Huh? Surprising info? Most of them agree. They're still maybe slightly reduced here, you know, 36%, but still, you know, strongly agree and agree, you know, 36 and 36 together, right? So they agree that the information is surprising. What? Uh, 25 students. Yes, unfortunately. But <coughs> that's because this was the first time and it would be something that one would continue to, to see, right? But it gives you some kind of an idea out in Idaho, redneck Idaho. I mean, we're talking a red state here. These guys voted for Trump. This impact, right? Uh, well written, you know. You need to know the cultural background of these also. The cultural background of these students when they express their views, because I think it resonates with their cultural background as well. No, actually, it's there's a change. Because when I get to Islamophobia, they're like, no, 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 no this, this is fine, we are not Islamophobic. And these are the guys who vote for Trump. They not Muslim, right? No, oh, no, they're not. They're, they're coming because they're afraid of Islam. They come to take Islamic civilization, and I teach Islamic civilization through tech, as opposed to, you know, the other forms of teaching civilization. I use tech to teach it, because I think it's important. Um, they thought it was pretty unbiased. I mean, this is a really interesting uh, breakdown, you know, non-Western perspective welcome. Look at this. 68% yes, we like it. It's good, right? Did I show you this one? This was new info. They, a lot of them thought this was new information. They didn't know. Now they act like Islamophobia is not something they ever participated in. You know, it's, it's very interesting in half a semester the how far they've come. That's the name of the game, you know. You, you, you change one group and they go and tell their friends and their family and then you slowly spread it, right? So this is why I think I understand the problems with the project. But I think the project has a larger reach. And we must keep that larger reach in mind, right? So, you know, there's more of these, but uh, let's see this one. They like the pictures very much. Look at this. You get 92% on your pictures. They love it. So, okay, that's done. Did I make it in 20 minutes, all Marvelous. of that? Marvelous, Marvelous, yes. Questions? Uh, thank you very much. I hadn't realized that the Professor Al-Hassani has such a good public relations person. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh, are you open to other contracts? <laughs> well, I also give them a hard time because I think I think it's important. I have. I don't. I have only recently the lady. This is the best sale pitch I've had in years. <laughs>